So as we are running the virtual conference on uh, Oracle, systematic Oracle SQL optimization uh, uh, in end of this month, April, and uh, additionally, another run of the same thing or mostly the same thing um, in September. So um, I'll give you a short overview of what's coming and, and, the, and why do we have such an agenda, right? So uh, um, last time we did this conference um, with the same speakers, um, well, Mauro uh, wasn't there 10 years ago, but, but anyway, we did this last event 10 years ago. Um, we ran a couple of online virtual conferences. One was about SQL tuning, one was about Exadata. So, and the, since 10 years have passed, I thought let's just run another, another one with mostly the same speakers, right? And, uh, or well, all the same speakers from the previous time, but uh, Mauro is showing uh, some hardcore optimizing trace reading to us this time additionally, right? So uh, anyway, so here are the dates, as you see, uh, two runs of pretty much the same thing. Um, here are the speakers, Carrie Millsup, Jonathan Lewis, Carrie Osborne, myself, and Mauro Pagano. And um, so uh, we put together this um, uh, these topics way before this whole virus thing and uh, uh, changed the world, right? Um, but I think it's still totally relevant and perhaps even more relevant in the coming months and uh, maybe years when, when um, there is even more demand for building and optimizing uh, an optimization of your, you know, any applications and database systems as well, right? Because cost cutting, you know, cost avoidance, you know, avoiding having to buy this extra uh, node or extra licenses for your, for maintaining your performance, right? So, so uh, in our agenda, nothing really changes. But um, I think these topics will be just more important in the coming coming months, right? So, Carrie Millsup will talk about the application performance and like the the mental model how do you reason about performance, right? Uh, at a higher level, right? And Jonathan Lewis then uh, will go down into Oracle execution plan level because well, your applications, among other things, will run SQL statements against this powerful and expensive database called Oracle, right? And how do you make sense of complex plans? And then I think um, Jonathan has some pretty, uh, pretty interesting content coming up there, right? And as far as these technical deep dives go, then I'm taking um, this kind of uh, a slightly different approach than usually, because, you know, normally you would say that performance is always about uh, time. The primary metric of performance is response time. You know, how much, how many minutes or hours or seconds you have to wait to get your amount of work done, done right? So, but the primary metric is time usually, right? When you wanna, uh, you know, when a user complains and you want to make that user happy, right? You have to start from response time usually, right? But in the context of uh, general efficiency of a system, in this talk, I'm going to take a different approach. Instead of looking into a single user who complains or a single application who that has a problem, I would rather say that, hey, what if I want to reduce the amount of CPU in the whole database? You know, what are these macro level approaches and tools that you can use? You know, so that we're not really looking into one application at a time or we're not looking into one SQL at a time, but rather you know, if your app is running 50,000 different SQLs, then, uh, you know, how would you systematically make the whole thing more efficient without, without hand tuning every single SQL statement one by one, right? So I have some scripts and tools and some things to say about that. And that will be my talk, right? And uh, Maura will then go way deeper um, that, um, into a very relevant topic again, that if you don't have the luxury to hand tune every single SQL and you don't want to hint every single SQL, if the optimizer is not doing the right thing, then, well, I mean, how can you, how can you chase the optimizer and see where it goes wrong, right? So I tried to sort of start from a higher level and systematically go, you know, like peeling 
we, we just peel the layers away, look into execution plans, then look into like workload optimization. You know, once all these execution plans get executed and maybe are using your indexes or not, I mean, how would we, you know, optimize workloads, entire workloads, um, uh, you know, when these plans are executed, right? And now that's the last, the most detailed uh, talk will look into optimize your decisions, right? And Kerry will also do a, something like a short keynote. Um, so he's not going to do a, like a super deep technical talk this time, but, uh, um, and this is, uh, well, this talk is even relevant now, you know, <laughs> after this whole virus thing um, popped up. So um, how do you stay relevant in the modern world? And then I guess we'll find out what the modern world will be like, right? Um, but um, like uh, my, you know, one of my comments here is that the, I think that the trend that already was happening, that more things got automated, things that 10 years ago, somebody did manually every morning, these are these are automated now or if they're not autom automated now in your shop then in in your cloud provider they are automated right so a lot of these repetitive things are automated um and um and uh well you know what does it where does it leave us right i mean instead of us as dbas who copy around data files or shrink rollback segments like you did 25 years ago uh you know we actually have to use our you know, human skills some more and talk to application developers and help those developers and de designers write reliable and performant code against this database, right? Um, so, uh, and obviously there are other trends as well, like this whole cloud uh, movement to the cloud. And uh, it will be interesting to see how that, how the new world will affect that. Anyway, so these are just my opi opinions, the stuff what I will talk about as well. Um, and after I have published this video, I will publish uh, uh, some very short interviews with individual speakers as well. And I'll ask a couple of questions from them and they will describe what they will talk about uh, in more detail, right? And as a last thing is like, it just to say is that I, you know, we, we wanna make this thing, this event like a conference. I mean, the name is a virtual conference. And that's why we have added plenty of uh, Q&A time breaks, uh, speaker panels, you know, again, again, with more opportunities to ask questions, right? So that there will be plenty of conference chat possibility. Um, uh, and we also will open a Slack channel when we start on the day one, and we will close that Slack channel when we finish on the second day. Or second half day, right? So you know the ch Slack channel will be uh, open for twenty eight hours or something like that. So for conference chat, right? And um, you know we we ran the first virtual conference ten years ago. We announced this a uh, couple of uh, months ago, um, but um, again in the context of uh, this um, coronavirus, um, I think it's clear that. Uh, the, the virtual conference trend is going to be accelerated uh, accelerated really fast as well, right? And we'll that's what we'll try to make happen in here so that uh, um, since we are going to be virtual, I don't think there is, are going to be any face-to-face um, -face physical conferences where I would go for a year or 18 months at least, maybe even a couple of years, um, you know, depending on uh, how, how it goes. Uh, then. Um, then now it's time to double down and uh, and um, do a proper virtual conference, and uh, let's see if it can be as fun as a on-prem conference. Well, not on-prem, like a physical conference. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's it for me. Uh, see you in end of April. Let's uh, let's have fun, and then we see you again in September again. Thank you.